Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sure, I'm glad y'all came to church tonight. Amen. I'd like to, pre- I'd like to present our newest member, Tyler Joseph. Amen. He was born September 1st. It was a Thursday. Had his little behind in church that next Wednesday. Amen. So you got to train up a child in the way he should go. Amen. Hallelujah. It means getting them to church. Whether they feel like it or not. Whether you feel like it or not. Amen. That's good. So tonight we want to share our testimony a little bit and just talk about how we got him here. We, uh, we came under a lot of, a lot of uh, attacks while he was in his mother's stomach. And uh, God came through for us. God showed up mightily for us. And we just wanted to, to share that with you all tonight. We wanted to kind of go through some of the scriptures that we stood on. Go through some of the principles that are, that are active and working. Uh, some of the rights and privileges that we have as believers, as children of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. For this night, Lord, this night of testimony, this night where we can praise you for your wonderful works, Father God. Lord, we thank you for every believer in this place. Lord, that we can come together as, as, as fellow members of the same family, Lord. Father God, I pray that this word would go forth tonight, Lord, and it wouldn't return void, but that it would accomplish much in the lives of all these hearers. Lord, I pray that my speech and my teaching be not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but would be in demonstrations of the Spirit and of power. Lord, we give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. 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 If you got your Bibles, open them up to Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah 66. Start off with a little background. You know, this is not the first time my wife has been pregnant. She got pregnant once about five or six years ago, and we ended up miscarrying and losing that baby, and it was awful. And I guess the first point we want to make tonight is don't blame God when something bad happens to you. The Bible says Jesus said that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That means if something's destroyed in your life, something's killed in your life, or something's stolen from you, who's responsible? God? No. No. It says the destroyer. Amen. But Jesus said, I came that you would have life and have it more abundantly. You know, miscarriage is not abundant life. It's the opposite. That's how we knew it didn't come from God. It was a dark time. It was a trying time. But we knew based on God's word that he was not responsible for us going through that. So we got pregnant again a couple years later. And this time, well, I'll let let you tell it. I wasn't going to go through that again. Um, We, uh... I wasn't exactly, during the mis- miscarriage, I wasn't exactly living as well as I should have been. And uh, so this time I, I had come back to God, gotten my life right, and uh, picked out about 30 scriptures to stand on because I was not going through that again at all. And, uh, you know, if you have, you have backup, it's a lot easier to be able to face something. Well, and you got to build your case. You know, why do you believe what you believe? Why do you believe that it's God's will to heal you? Well, if you don't know your Bible, if you don't know your word, you're going to have a hard time receiving from God. It's good to have a strong foundation. Amen. So she went, and no joke, she found 30 scriptures, and she wrote each and every one of them out. And she pasted them on our bathroom window, and she, or mirror, and she pasted them on our bedroom wall. They and were she everywhere. Pa- and she spoke them every single day. Amen. Now, Now, Ben, we didn't really have any any huge problems pretty much it was just 10 months and then he got here and praise God mm-hmm. so we got pregnant with Tyler mm-hmm. and uh, so Jean went and dug out her pregnancy scriptures again you can just pull that chair back if you want but uh, you want to share some of your scriptures um sure yeah uh, well one of the scriptures that one of the big ones was you gonna take him okay there you go we fight over who gets to hold the baby unless grandma's holding him then nobody fights but um, uh, one of our scriptures that I, I had was uh, Exodus twenty three twenty six, and it says uh, that there w- that you know what I'm just gonna go there because it's twenty three twenty six Exodus twenty three twenty six. I'm not used to doing this. I usually just sit there and write all my stuff down. This is weird. Okay, twenty three twenty six. 23, 23, 26. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Uh, the New King James says there will be no miscarriage or be barren in the land. So that was, that's one of my big ones that I held on to with Ben and with Tyler. 
Um, well, and, and, you know, that was written to the Israelites. That was written to God's servants. And if you know God didn't want his servants having miscarriages, how many of y'all know he doesn't want his children to have miscarriages? We are the children of God. Um, another one was First uh, Timothy two fifteen. Uh huh. See if I can. Yes, I have my phone, but your Bible is right here, so why not use it? I found it on my phone. Daniel beat us to it. First um, Timothy two fifteen. Uh, wait. Yes. I'm in 2 Timothy. See, I'm not used to this. Uh, Okay. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. She will be saved in childbearing. And by extension, her baby will be saved in childbearing. Um, I also use John 10.10, 10, which we just talked about, where Jesus came to bring life. Um, and Hebrews 11.11, 11, which actually talks about Sarah and how Sarah had faith. And Jim just talked about this last week, mm-hmm. having faith uh, you know, in God because she went back and she looked at, at everything he had already brought them through. And we had been brought through so much. So with one with Ben and two with Tyler, so... And my, my biggest one, which we were just at, was Isaiah 66, 9. We're probably coming back to this one a lot, um, which is over here. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? And the New King, the New King James says, Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I... Who caused delivery shut the womb, says your God. Well, that, that's a rhetorical question. Will I not bring you to the time of delivery and not deliver? Well, of course. Of course. Did, it, did the doctor give you a reason why it was a miscarriage, or did it give you? No. They, um, possible high blood pressure during that time, but that was about it. They didn't really have anything overall. Otherwise, I was healthy. So... So, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? That was her battle cry. That means, you know, she had all these scriptures that she was feeding on and speaking on every day. But when the devil would come against her with some kind of circumstance or a bad report, what was the first thing she said? Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? Shall I shut up the womb? No. God, we're standing on your promise. We we fully expect you to cause the delivery of this child. Amen. So, we got pregnant back in December and Valentine's Day came and that was on a Sunday this year so we got home from church um, we had actually what, one of the big things was I wanted to wait till uh, three months because that's kind of been the thing uh, since we miscarried to tell people and we had just told everybody at church that last Wednesday before this Sunday um, Valentine's comes we come home and I start having miscarrying symptoms and like I said, I've gone through a miscarriage. I knew exactly what was going on. And I walked out of the bathroom trying. Fear can attack you no matter what. Mm-hmm. Fear can come upon you like that. Yep. And I'm reading scriptures. And I came out of that bathroom clamped down on fear so hard it was ridiculous. And that wasn't helping any. Thank God for us. Well, she came out of the husband. bathroom and you could, you could just see it on her face. I mean, she's, she's this close to just... Breaking losing down. it, breaking down. She yeah. was shaking. You know, honey, what's wrong? And she told me. And uh, and, and to be real honest, there was a, there was a temptation there for me to get into fear. That thought flew across my mind: we're going to lose this baby, just like we lost the first one. Now that thought was not of God. Where do you think that thought came from? It came from the enemy. That's right. It says we're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices, of his temptations, of his methodology. How did he tempt Eve? Hey, I'm just going to throw this this thought. I'm just going to plant this thought in there. What do you think about that? So we had two choices. We could side with what we knew the Word of God said. Shall I bring the time of birth and not cause delivery? Or we could side with what the symptoms and what these circumstances were telling us. So I took a breath. I resisted that thought. I said, you know what? We need to pray. And she started crying a little bit. So we we joined hands and started to pray. And to be honest, I didn't pray for our baby. 
I didn't pray one lick. We had already prayed that he would get here. We were already standing on scripture. I just, well, I thanked God of what he was doing. I thanked God that he was going to bring to the time of delivery. I thanked God that there would be no miscarriages in the land. And I prayed that we would have perfect peace, that he would help us cast all our care on him because yes. he cares for us. You know, fear will rob you of your miracles. Yes. Yes. Did you know that? You know, God gets a bad rap. People teach out of the book of Job. Turn to Job chapter 3, verse 25. Why did Job get attacked? Well, the, the hedge of protection got lifted, right? Yeah. Well, what caused the hedge of protection to be lifted? You ever think about that? Was God just, oh, you know what? I'm going to ruin this guy's day for no reason. Is that how it went down? No. Look at Job chapter 3. And look at verse 25. This is Job talking. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come to me. He expected every last thing that happened to him to happen to him. Job lived a lifestyle of fear. It says he went and offered, he went and offered offerings to God just in case something, you know, his kids had done something wrong. And that's not the way, that's not the way we be, bring worship, honor, and praise to God. We don't do it motivated by fear. We do it motivated by faith. faith. Amen. Amen. That fear will snuff out whatever you're believing God for. That fear will short circuit what, what God's doing in your life. Think about Peter. Think about Peter walking on the water. Jesus gave him gave him a word. Come. Come on. Hey, come on. We got a few seats. Right up here if y'all want to sit. Yeah. Come on. But Peter received a word from Jesus Christ and stepped out into that water. And as long as he kept his eyes on the word, what happened? He was walking on water. But the second he took his eyes off the word and put them on the wind and waves, he got into fear. Before he sank, he was in faith. When he started to sink, he was in fear. Now what changed? I mean, those winds and waves were blowing just as hard before he took his eyes off Jesus as they were after he took his eyes off Jesus, but he made the conscious decision to not trust in that word of the Lord that he received and to, and to embrace that fear, to embrace that circumstance and to, and to put, put his trust in what that circumstance is going to tell him, you're going to drown, you're going to fail, you're going to fall, you're going to lose this baby. Yep. Yes. You know, it's easy to shout and laugh and dance in the middle of a church service. It's easy. It's a lot harder when you got that circumstance staring you in the face. Yes. <sighs> That's why it's important to be built up on our word. <clears throat> Critically important. Jesus said that we ought to build our house on the rock. So that when the, rain, when the rains come, not if the rains come, Jesus told you that rain is coming. Yes. Amen. Amen. So where's your house built? When's the last time you read your Bible outside of church? got a lot of Christians building their house on the sand and when those when those rains come when their house falls they want to blame God for it when Jesus gave you the solution ahead of time amen, amen. build your life on the rock or else it, it, it's it's going to be easier to resist that fear when you're built on the rock than it is if you're built on that sand because sand's not going to hold you you can't expect that sand to hold you you can expect that rock to hold you amen amen Hallelujah. Build your house on the rock. You know, we, when I prayed, when I prayed, when she had those symptoms, you know, I resisted that fear in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, you know, you know fears of the devil, right? Yes. And the Bible says in James 4, 7, if you resist the devil, he's got to flee from you. So I'm going to resist that fear in the name of Jesus. Fear, we come against you. We resist you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. We bind this fear right now. We cast our cares on the Lord. And Lord, we trust you to keep us in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Uh, James 4, 7 is resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. And we had our battle cry. Will I not bring to the time of delivery? Will I not bring forth? So we prayed, and he handed me a little Bible that we have, that we've had for ever. And I went off to the hospital, because um, it's right by the house. And uh, um, Time out. You know, I asked her if she wanted me and my younger son to come, and she said, no, he just laid down for a nap, so you just stay here, I'll call you if I need you. Yeah. 
So it wasn't like I just kicked her out the door. <laughs> that did sound I that just want to make sure. I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Yeah, no, no. I didn't want I didn't want Ben at the hospital and have to uh, no. But um so I get to the hospital and and I've got tears. It's you know, but I, I've got my Bible and I'm looking, you know, I'm reading the scriptures and you know, checking in and they take your vitals and stuff and, and you could you know they ask you what's wrong so I'm like well I'm 11 weeks pregnant this is what's going on and you could just see it on their faces oh because at 11 weeks there's nothing they can do and uh and so I sat in the lobby and kept reading my scriptures got into the room kept reading my scriptures praying in the spirit because I didn't want anything else to come out of my mouth I would you know and uh they go and they take me back to the ultrasound and the kid is doing flips I'm not kidding, actual flips. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and they're like, oh, the heart rate's good. He's moving. Everything's fine. We don't know why. You know, I, I, these things happen sometimes. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and you, you can't tell me that these things just happen. Because like I said, I've been through a miscarriage. That's the symptoms that I was having. That's what was going on. And if we had gotten into fear or given into fear if I didn't have this amazing person right here who you know put the brakes on real quick I don't want to think about what would have happened because oh no well she goes off to the hospital so I call my mom tell her what happens get her to start praying I call Pastor Daniel get him to start praying and I call Pastor John and he, he called me right back you know he's praying I didn't call everybody I knew I didn't want everybody I knew to know right I mean, you you know, you got some people where okay, hey, you know, my wife's having these symptoms. Oh well, you know, some you know, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Mm-hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, maybe He's trying to teach you something. And then what are they going to do when they get off the phone? They're going to call their friends. Oh, you know what's going on? She's losing that baby. You remember when Jesus? was going to raise that little girl from the dead. What's the first thing he did when he got in that little girl's room? He sent out the doubt and unbelief. Nope. Because that will hinder what God is doing. That doubt and unbelief can't overcome faith. Did you know that? You know, it says Jesus went to his hometown. And, uh, and I don't know what the, the, the reference is off the top of my head. But it says he went to his hometown. And it says that, that uh, there was a lot of doubt and unbelief there because they were familiar with him. It says he could not do any great work there except he healed, laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them of minor ailments. It didn't say that he would not do it. It said he could not do it. Those people's doubt and unbelief hindered Jesus Christ, the Son of God, flowing in that healing anointing. You need to be real careful who you tell when you're going through something. If you want God to move on your behalf, don't just tell everybody. Don't, I, I, you know, if it wasn't for them praying for me, I wouldn't have told none of them. That's between me. That's between us and God. And if you're going to hook up with me and hooking up with uh, receiving our miracle, great. I'm going to let you know so you can be praying for me. But otherwise, otherwise, I'm going to run to the throne before I run to the phone. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hey. Amen. I mean, we're serious about this. This is life and death. You know, we've already gotten the death part of this once. It's not happening again. It's not hap- See, I feel like Christians don't realize or understand how often, how, how much of a part we have to play in receiving from God. You know how many times Jesus told somebody, your faith has made you whole? He didn't say my power made you whole. He didn't say my anointing made you whole. He said your faith has made you whole. If their faith made them whole, can your faith make you whole? Amen. Amen. Too many Christians waiting on God to reach out of heaven and drop this blessing on them when you've got a part to play. you got a part. If you lack something, let him ask of God. Because, uh, uh, but, but let him ask in faith. Amen. Nothing wavering. We weren't about to start wavering. That wavering would have assured us that this baby would not have made it. I, I, have, I, have, I am fully convinced in my heart that if we had responded in fear, this baby would not be here today, right now. I, I am deathly serious about that. That was, that was intense. But you know what? The Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. Well, that was affliction number one. Amen. So... 
So Jean had to get some blood work done as mm -hmm. part of her regular thing. Want to tell this part? Yeah, sure. Uh, pregnant, the, the first trimester and the third trimester, they have you do blood work to check and make sure everything's good, nothing's getting past the baby. Um, one of the things they check for is uh, syphilis, which is an STD. Um, my test for syphilis came back totally negative with Ben. So between the uh, Valentine's Day thing and this, we, uh, we had a few other things pop up financial stuff, things like that, where we would bind together when two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them, pray, everything would be fine. Oh, so, oh yeah, we, we, had a, we had like a financial problem, mm -hmm. we had a, this problem, and we, what, we just joined whenever two or more agree is touching anything, it'll be done for, I mean, we're just, you know, Bible six shooter in this thing up. It's amazing when you, you have something, you know, somebody you can hook up with, and, and so the devil doesn't like that, Amen. he doesn't like that at all. So I get a phone call from the lab. Hi, I just want to let you know that your syphilis test came back positive. I said, I'm sorry, what? That's not, that's not possible. Yes, well, that's okay. You're still in childbearing age, so you'll be fine as soon as you get, uh, you know, treatment for it. You're not pregnant by na right now, are you? Yes. Oh, I need to call your doctor right this minute. Let me call, get you off the phone. And I'm like, oh, I don't even think so. No, 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 no. I do not. No. So I called my husband not thinking about what this sounds like. And my first thought is we're gonna pray because this is ridiculous. This is, they, they've got a test messed up. I don't know what's going on, but this is not, this is not it. I know, I'm sorry. Well then let me just say, there's only one way you can get syphilis. <laughs> yep. Now, 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 now. They said syphilis and they changed the subject for a second. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I didn't, hear, I didn't hear anything you said after you said syphilis. Well, yeah. that, there's only one way you can get syphilis. Now, I trust my wife, but if you're going to put that evidence right in front of me. <laughs> so I, now, I, I didn't blow up on her. I just said, sweetheart, not. let me call you back on break. <laughs> so, got some praying in the spirit I got to do on this bullshit. <laughs> So I called my doctor, and they of course make you like leave a voicemail and wait, right? So I called my doctor because there's got to be something wrong here. Now while I'm waiting for my doctor to call me back, I am, I am angry. I am livid at this point. You know, sometimes, sometimes we don't need to be nice to the devil. Sometimes we don't need to sit there and go, I'm sorry, Mr. Devil, could you just leave me alone? No. I was yelling. I was pacing. I was, I was cursing him in the name of Jesus, you get out of here, you are not putting a wedge between me and my That's husband, fine. I don't even think so. My doctor calls me back, yeah, it's a false positive, they were looking for an antibody that has to, uh, penicillin, yeah. and it turns out you have some, that's what they found. You don't have syphilis. <laughs> now, the other thing is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> sorry, hon. <laughs> so, the other thing is, um, because it showed up in the first trimester's test, it will, not it might, it will show up in the third trimester test. Can I tell you it did not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, oh, man. You know, she said she was mad. I've seen her mad. I can imagine she was this close to cussing at that guy, okay? But, but yeah, yeah. So it's going to come back positive. Nope, no, it's not. Father God, I, you said whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them. I believe I receive a totally clear syphilis test. And sure enough, com I mean, absolutely, completely negative. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he tried. It, isn't that just like the devil, though? Yeah. Try and sow that discord. I mean, I mean, there, there's so much that happened. <laughs> there's so much that happened that it, it, there's no way this is a coincidence. This was a coordinated attack on our lives and the life of our baby. But Jim, I gotta stop. How many of y'all would have just, just, come on. We, we gotta talk about this. Man. Truth be told, your wife get that test back, fellas. Come on now. How many of y'all would have just, I'm going to see my attorney when you told me that. <laughs> 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 I mean, honestly, I, I mean, how many wives, how many wives would automatically look at the husband and say, you did something dirty? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Not that you don't trust your daughter-in-law. Oh, gosh. But it's the flesh, y'all. But, yeah. it, but this couple buried their soul tonight. I want y'all to get this. The enemy don't care who you are. That's right. Listen, this is a couple praying and believing, but yet look why he drives this wedge or try to drive a wedge with such a test. And some of us would we, we have time to listen to the doctor come back with another, another report. We just went off. We were looking for a divorce lawyer. Yeah. We cussed each other out. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, First Corinthians, it tells you about that there's a spirit man and there's a flesh man. Mm -hmm. And that flesh man will try to override that spirit man every single time. So when you get bad news, regardless of what it is, always try to engage it with your spirit first. Like this couple, just example. They engage it with their spirit first because they knew the love they had for each other was not going to be tested in any way. But yet they had to hear it with their spiritual ears and not their fleshly ears. Well, and and uh, and you know, at the start of our marriage, if you were in our marriage, which meant you know that we we've had some trust issues in the past, and now our marriage is in a place where we're rock solid, and, and we trust each other, and she trusts me, and I trust her. But uh, it was funny, you know, I called her back on my break, and she had gotten in touch with her doctor, so she explained to me the, I mean, start to finish the false positive, and I don't have it, and she said, and if you still want to test this baby, make sure it's yours. Well, I I, I would do that. I would do what? Well, but she values that trust. I said that's that's okay. I believe you. I trust. You. I mean. But she was committed to that trust. Amen. She knew that, that we needed this trust in order to uh, stay in faith, stay in agreement. How can two walk together unless they be in agreement? Amen. 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 That's good. Bless God. So, boy, we were sure mad at that. that wasn't that just like him? Try and split us up? Try and, try and sow that seeds of, of, of discord? I mean, it says two can put, what was it? Two can put, one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. Well, what if you drive a wedge between those two? They ain't putting anybody to flight. Amen. <laughs> Huh. All right, so then we fast forward because we're not done. <laughs> and so we're, we're 20 weeks pregnant, which means you get to do the ultrasound to find out what you're having. It's always really fun, really exciting. So we find out we're having a boy. And then uh, Jim was there with Ben, and then they went out to the lobby. And then I talked to the doctor. They found something on Tyler's heart. They don't know what it is. They have no idea. I have to go to a specialist. They don't, they don't know what it is. Now, when I went through the, the miscarriage symptoms, fear gripped me pretty bad. Not, not too proud to own up to that. Um, when they told me that something was on Tyler's heart, I said, okay, thank you for your report. Went downstairs, told Jim, said he's fine. He's totally fine. Praise God, we've got scriptures, we're praying. I had perfect peace. There was no fear, there was nothing, no anxious, nothing. He's fine. But a lot of that was on us to cast those cares. You know, if we, if we would have wanted to hold on to those cares, you can bet the devil would have accommodated us with some fear. Amen. Yes. So, so oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say something. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, that's the other thing. The doctor gave us this report of there being a speck on his heart. Well, we're, you know, we're believing we receive a, a full, healthy baby. Amen. Amen. When that doctor said, well, we found a speck on his heart, we didn't stand up and blow his clipboard's hand and say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Have I not borne it? No, 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 no. I mean, they're going to think you're crazy. You, you thank them for their report. You go on you know, go on into your car, and that's when you jump on the devil. I mean, some Christians can get a little, you're laughing at me, but some Christians get a little way out there denying that there's a problem. You know, we never denied a single problem with this baby, but we spoke the solution to the problem. We spoke what the Word of God said about our problem. You know, the God, when God created the whole world, He spoke it into existence. But notice when it was dark, He didn't say, dark, stop being dark. He didn't deny the darkness. He said, let there be light. We didn't, we didn't deny the malady, but we spoke healing over it. We spoke the Word of God, what the Word of God says about it. Yeah, we're going to have afflictions, but yeah, He's going to deliver us out of them all. Amen. I'll find it for you. Amen. So, it's about his heart. Yes. So, we had uh, we had perfect peace about it. We prayed about it. You know, rebuke, rebuke, rebuked it in the name of Jesus. I can speak. And, uh, and you know, stood on the word. 
you know, prayed that, that the, heart, the speck would be gone. Because the doctor said, you know, sometimes in a couple weeks it disappears. So a couple weeks later, I have to go to the specialist. They find it. It's definitely still there. Oh well. Didn't work. God doesn't work. Nothing, you know, whatever. No, that's not what we did. We're, we're going to stand in faith. Right. You know. Um, so even though the spot was still there, I go and I talk to the specialist and he goes, oh, it's a calcium deposit. It's nothing. It's no big deal. He's fine. So, he, so she gets home and she tells me it was just a calcium deposit. I said, praise God. She's like, but that's not what I prayed for. I prayed that it would be gone. And I'm standing in faith that it's going to be gone. Amen. Amen. Like we got the good report, but hey, man, the Bible says whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, you got to believe you receive it before you have it. Amen. That means it might look like whatever, but you got to stay in faith. You have to continually believe you receive it. And she was believing she received healing and health from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Amen. So she was staying in faith. Even though the doctor gave us a favorable report, no, I want that thing gone. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That um, scripture about the afflictions is in Psalms 34, 19. Thank you, Mr. Um, the other thing the doctor told me was he was measuring small. He was, he was very small for where he should be. And because of the calcium deposit and the size, those were soft tells for Down syndrome. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, once again, I didn't, I didn't fall into fear like I did the first time. It was okay. Thank you, sir. And he said, so we're going to do a blood test. Now, doctors don't lie to you. You know, they, they're trying to be cautious. They're going to, so you know what, sir? Okay, we will do the blood test. I will know what I'm praying against. Um, <laughs> so we did the blood test. Uh, we prayed. Once again, we kept standing that, that he was healthy, healed, and whole. That oh, he was, oh, yeah. Once know, they gave us that report, we went home. Down syndrome, I bind you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says whatever I bind in heaven or bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and we bind you in the name of Jesus. Down syndrome, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You can rebuke sickness and disease. Jesus did it. Mm-hmm. And he said that we would do the same works he did. Mm-hmm. Amen. If he's going to rebuke that fever, I'm going to rebuke that Down syndrome. Right. Amen. Amen. I ain't got time to play. Uh, so we get a phone call a couple weeks later. Nope, no problem. He's fine. Everything's good. Every, He's every, just small. Every genetic test came back totally completely fine. clean. But, but we just don't know. I mean, we, you know, to hear the doctors tell it, they were convinced something was wrong with this child. Like there ought to be something wrong with this child. So you know what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and to be honest, all the signs of the natural pointed to something being wrong with him. Well, we want to do an amniocentesis. That's where they put a, a, a needle into her stomach this far from the baby's face. And, and you know, I mean, hey, you got to do what you got to do. But they said we want to test for more genetic diseases. We won't be able to fix any of them, but we just want to know ahead of time. And we said, you know what? No thanks. No thanks. It's not going to change a thing. It's not going to change our faith. Or our belief. You know what? If you did take it and you did tell us there was something, we are still coming against this thing in the name of Jesus. So no thank you. You know, and the doctor kind of looked at her kind of weird. You know, yeah. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. Like I said, if, if you got to get one of those done, hey, do what you got to do. But as for us in this situation, no, no thanks. We are standing in faith. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. A lot of Christians miss it there. It gets a little bit hard. It gets a little bit, no, I'm done. God, why would you let that happen? Amen. Don't shout me down just because I'm teaching real good. <laughs> Having done all to stand, Stand, therefore. Don't give up. Don't ever give up because you're going through. Stand on the Word of God. No matter how hard it's raining, if your house is built on the rock, it's going to stand. Hallelujah. So he's measuring small. He keeps measuring small. They talked about they might have an issue with his uh, placenta. Babies make their own placenta, and he's not doing a good job making his own placenta. So we said, okay, thank you very much. You came home. I said, honey, honey, there's a wrestler. There's a professional wrestler named Ryback. And this guy, this guy looks like the poster child for steroid abuse, okay? This is the biggest, most muscled man I think I've ever seen in my life. Can I get a, can I get a witness? This is a big old dude. His neck is bigger than my waistline, okay? Huge. And his nickname is The Big Guy. The Big Guy. That's what he calls himself. So he'll, he'll come out and then he'll say something and say, big guy out, and take off and leave. This huge, muscly guy. So I got to read my Bible, and it talks about how God 
promised Abraham that he'd be the father of many nations. And not only that, but he changed his name from Abram, which means father, to Abraham, which means father of many nations. And he changed Sarai's name from Sarai, which means mother, to Sarah, which means mother of many nations. He was calling those things which be not as though they were, right? So every time someone said, hey, Abraham, that person was speaking the promise. And every time Abraham said, my name's Abraham, he was speaking the promise. And every time God talked to Abraham and said, hey, Abraham, God was speaking the promise. Amen. Amen. So you know what, honey? I think we should call our little boy the big guy. The big guy. And every night before he we went to sleep, I'd lay my stomach or lay my head on her stomach and say, hey, big guy, it's dad. How you doing? You are healthy, healed, and whole in the name of Jesus. you got ten fingers and ten toes. You are growing exactly how you're supposed to grow. And you're my little big guy. In Jesus' name. Every day. How's the big guy doing? We'd talk, call him that on the phone. We'd call him that. We talked about him. We'd call him big guy, big guy, big guy, big guy, big guy. And, we, and, and, and the way they measure it is by what percentile he's in. See, they want him to be between the 10% and the 90%. You know, any more and you're too big, any less and you're too small. So you need to be between 10 and 90. Well, he was five. Well, hey, he's our big guy. He's our big guy. Measured him the next week, he's at six or seven. He's our big guy. He's our big guy. So we, <laughs> so we went two weeks calling him the big guy. He went from 8% to 18% in two weeks. In two weeks. Amen. And this whole time, she's speaking every, every scripture she's got wrote out. She's, there will be no miscarriages in the land. She will be saved in childbearing. Amen. Have I not brought to the time of delivery, will I not bring forth? Amen. Talking to our big guy. Talking to our big guy. Let me tell that or you want to tell that. Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, no, you got it. Okay. It's cool. Uh, something happened, and it's a real long story that I'm not going to get into it. And, uh, and we, we had a bunch of diapers and wipes that we had to take back to the store. That's, that's just, that was the circumstance that we couldn't keep it, couldn't hold on to it, had to take it back. Now, that's, that, it's a considerable amount of diapers and wipes. All my parents who had to buy diapers know how expensive diapers are. Amen. And we're just going to have to trust God. We're just going to have to trust God. So I had a tooth pull. You want to go see Grandma? Intermission. And so I got a tooth pulled on a Wednesday, and uh, and so I'm I'm at home. I'm drugged up. And I sent my wife to church, you know, like a good good dutiful wife she is. And uh, and she calls me after church is out, and leaves a voicemail and says, Jim, I just got off of church, and uh, just give me a call back. Now she never calls me Jim over the phone. It's always <laughs> honey, sweetheart. So for her to call me Jim, I mean. What, I mean, what's wrong? Are you, are you in labor? I mean, <laughs> she never calls me, you know. So I call her back, and she's about in your tears, and she told me how our church threw us a diapers and baby wipes baby shower that night. Boxes and boxes of diapers and packages and packages of what? Exactly what we need. You know what my Bible says? It says says, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. We needed diapers and we needed wipes. And he showed himself, so what's it say? Out of the, out of the uh, uh, given will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Will men give to your bosom? Yes. You know, God's not just going to like rain money out of heaven to you. He's going to have people to bless you. And we, we love our church family. They would be a blessing to us. And God used them to bless us mightily. So thank you guys. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, we had a lady at work, and uh, she said, hey, you know, did you guys get that pack and play, you know, that uh, playpen? I said, not yet. She said, okay, well, I ordered it. It's going to be here in a week. Ordered it for you guys. Praise, Praise God. God. That's the last big thing we needed. Yeah. God showed up, uh, uh, blessed us with a pack and play, a nice pack and play that he sleeps in. Amen. So, so uh, Jean has to go to the doctor twice a week, every week. And one of the appointments is up in Cobb County. That, that's a 40-minute drive. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they gave her the report that he had gone back below 10% again. He went from 18 back, you know, because it's kind of like a, a moving scale. You know, he's going to be growing, but they want him to be at a certain point. And uh, so she goes back, and he, he's not growing right. 
But they look on the ultrasound, the speck on his heart, totally gone. Totally gone. Now, it didn't happen immediately. I mean, she went to the doctor for about four months, and every ultrasound, there's that speck. There's that speck. There's that speck. That speck started talking to her. I'm always going to be here. You better get used to me. I'm not leaving. No. We believe we receive healing. Either that speck is a liar, or God's word is a liar. And God's not a liar. We're going to keep standing on his word. And one of them's got to give. Well, guess what gave? That speck. It's gone. Completely gone. So, so uh, you know, so they, they check him. He's a little small, but they can't find anything wrong. They do stress tests, which is where they measure the baby for 20 minutes. And he, he's doing a thing where he's, like, practicing his breathing, and he's moving and responding. and I mean, passed every stress test he ever took. So one time she was getting ready to leave. The doctor said his test is fine. His, his growth is, isn't great, but it's okay, and, and there's no problems, and um, you're high risk. So we'll see, we'll see you in a week. Yep. Labeled her as high risk. Couldn't find a thing wrong with him, but they knew those doctors were convinced there had to be something wrong with that baby. Uh, you're high risk. Uh, you get blood rest for two weeks. You're high risk. High risk, high risk, high risk. Mm-hmm. Bless God. Is he going to bring the time of delivery and not call for it? No, absolutely not. We're going to keep standing on the word. That rain kept on falling. Those winds and waves kept on beating on our house. But our house is on the rock. So, hey, keep talking about the big guy. doesn't care what it looked like. Abraham didn't have any kids for 10 years after he got the name Abraham. Amen. But that didn't stop him from calling himself Abraham. So we kept calling him our big guy, calling him our big guy. So we go in there. And he was eight. eight was it eight percent? Mm-hmm. And he went from eight percent to twenty percent in two weeks. Twenty percent. He was five pounds three ounces. Mm-hmm. So he's at the twenty twentieth percentile. So they're measuring him every two weeks now. So I talked to my doctor. Please tell me I don't have to take any more non-stress tests because he's are officially twenty percent. We're good, right? Okay. Well, if he measures one more time and he's higher, then you don't have to take them. The non-stress test. You literally sit there for twenty minutes and. It's, it's horrible, yeah. And it's just they're measuring the heart rate mixed with how much they're moving, and he was fine. Fine. So, real quick, real quick. Uh, and the other thing was every single appointment, okay, if he doesn't measure at least 20 this time, we are taking you across the street, and we're getting this baby out of you. Yeah. Okay? Oh, he's 20. Okay, well, if he's one little drop below, we're taking him across. If you don't feel him move for one day, you, we're going to take you straight to the hospital. I mean, they, I mean, they were ready to, yeah. they were treating her like he was this close to death door. They told me, you are not making it to 40 weeks. We are probably going to deliver at 38, maybe earlier. You're not making it to 40. I mean, they were projecting 36 weeks. Yeah, that was at one point. Um, So he's at the 20th percentile. Two weeks later, he jumped from the 20th percentile to the 41st percentile and was seven pounds, one ounce. Now, two pounds in two weeks. (laughs) Now, his brother, when his brother was born, was seven pounds even. So officially, the small one is uh, measuring over what his brother Bigger was. Bigger than his brother before he was he got even here. born. Um, I actually went to a prayer meeting here uh, for the women and uh, prayed to, uh, to for agreement because we were already in prayer that we would make it 40 weeks. And this was lighting up perfectly with that because now, oh look, now he's, uh, he's fine. So now we're going to go ahead and let you go 40 weeks because, well, apparently he's fine. Well, well and, and have I not brought to the time of delivery? Well, you know what? We're going to expect God to bring him to the time of delivery. Not 36 weeks, not 37 weeks, not th- well, 40 week delivery, full term, full delivery. Mm-hmm. Now, he did end up getting here a couple days early, but that was because we got anxious. It wasn't actually because of the doctors. You skipped a part. I skipped a part. About about a week and a half before his due date, her body starts going into contractions. Oh yeah. Every day now, now like that one Saturday, we had him like on the hour, every hour for like five or six hours, and then they stopped. We I mean, we thought it was coming. No, they they stopped. So then all that night she had contractions, and all the next day she had contractions. That baby wouldn't get here, and Jean's like, you know, I wish this baby would would get here, would hurry up and just come, you know. I said, honey, but you believed God that he wouldn't get here till forty weeks, and God is honoring that. Your body's trying to have this baby, and your faith won't let him come. Amen. <laughs> Forty weeks. So yeah. So finally, we get to our, our. He came. They induced him two days before her due date. Have I not brought 
the time of delivery, will I not bring forth? Um, there was one other scripture that we uh, we stood on, which is uh, Exodus one nineteen. And we stood on this for Ben. And we stood on this for Tyler. This is when the the Hebrew children were in slavery to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was worried about them getting too too big, too many people, so he ordered the midwives that when they would have a boy child to just kill the boy baby right there when she had him. Exodus 1.19 And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered, er, the, with, the, the midwives come, before the midwives come in unto them. I'm sorry, it says er, E-R-E. Yeah. Anyway, lively birth. Lively, lively birth. The, uh, what, what does it say? Vigorous, vigorous birth in the says, New King James. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we stood on this with Ben. Ben was also induced, and by the time I went into actual labor with him, it was 30 minutes. So we stood on this with Tyler. Once again, it was 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Three contractions, and he was here in the world. You want to talk about a vigorous birth? Amen. Amen. <laughs> But Jim, but Jim, that, that's Old Testament. That's Old Covenant. You know, if God wanted his servants to be lively and have fast and easy births, do you think he wants his children? I mean, we're children of God now, right? We're not spiritually dead. Christ came. Any man being Christ is a new creature. I am part of God's family now. You better believe if he wanted it for his servants, he wants it for his children. Amen. These, these, these promises are for our example. They're not here just to fill up pages in the Bible. It says the Old Testament's here for our example that we can learn. We can learn about the character of God. You know, God cares about the issues you have in life. And He is El Shaddai. He is the God who is more than enough. El Shaddai, not El Chipo. But you talk to most Christians, and they, it sounds like they, they serve El Chipo, like the God who's just barely getting by, the God who makes you sick on purpose, the God who kills your loved ones just for the fun of it. No. He's the God who is more than enough. And He delivers you out of all your trials, tribulations. Amen. Amen. But, but it's up to us to stand on His Word. See, if you don't stand on His Word, there's not a thing He can do for you. And a lot of Christians don't want to hear that. They'd rather put it off on, well, if He wanted to show up, He just would. Well, it doesn't work that way. we got to build our house on the rock. We got to ask in faith, nothing wavering. Because if you waver, you're like a wind of the sea, tossed to and fro. Don't let that person expect to receive anything from the Lord. Don't expect it. Don't expect it. If you're wavering, if you just don't know, don't expect. You got to ask in perfect confidence that God's going to be good to His word. You got to plead your case. You got to lay out your scriptures and show Him exactly why you believe what you believe and exactly why you expect this to come to pass and you got to show the devil why he doesn't have a hold on your life Amen. you got to resist him yes. you resist the devil not Jesus comes out of heaven and resists him for you you resist the devil but praise God he's a defeated foe yes. we already have the victory all you got to do is rest assured in the promises of God all you got to do is rebuke him in the name of Jesus and he has got to go Amen, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's all we got. Um, it's actually 8.30 on the dot. Oh, wow. Uh, Pastor John, you got it? Pastor Daniel, you got it? I, I just have to say, um, I have been so stinking excited for them to give this testimony. Um, I just like text him every week. Are you going to give it now? Are you it now? <laughs> he was Maybe doing that during it, here. too. You, you've got enough to testify about until the baby gets here. But, I mean, and you've got to realize the whole time all this is going on, or a majority of that time, he was up here teaching every week on God's will on healing. God's will on healing. And he's having to prove this out. He hasn't even talked about his own personal attacks. Attacks on his health that happened um, during that time. I mean, and it's it's absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, and I, I thank God. Um, just to have a friend like Jim. You know, we've known each other since we were teenagers. Um, um, and um, I, I know of no other person who is so convinced that the word of God is true, Amen. and that it will uh, that it will do 
exactly what it says it's going to do. And um, and I just I'm so thankful for both of them, and uh, that he's an inspiration here in our church to us here on Wednesday nights. And uh, I just pray that that same confidence of the Word of God that that, that just rubs off on all of us. That, that same confidence that we'll have it that no matter what happens. Uh, it's easy to have that kind of faith. I've got all the faith in the world in Sunday morning when the band's going and we're dancing around at the altar. I've got all, every bit of faith. But, you know, come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday morning right before we get to church, um, do we have that same confidence in the Word of God? Amen. Amen. And I want to challenge everybody. I want you to start, if you're not already... Start building your life on the rock. I want you to read a chapter out of your Bible every day for the next seven days. Every time you find a promise that applies to you, I want you to write it down. I want you to speak that over your life. And I want you to expect it to come to pass. And I want to hear about it when it does. Find a New Testament book. Find an epistle. Find, read one of the Gospels. Find it. Read it. Stand on it. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this service tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us.